My name is Colin Joya Connors. Um, it's an Italian middle name. Uh, it means joy. And I'm here to bring joy to, uh, to you all this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about the eSagas project. Uh, my name is Colin Joya Connors and I'm in the Department of Scandinavian Studies. I'm a PhD candidate and um, as an instructor um, I have been um, uh, able to teach on a number of courses dealing with medieval literature, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, our courses focus on the language, literature, and cultures of Scandinavia. And the medieval literature that I'm talking about comes specifically from Iceland, way up in the corner. And uh, the medieval literature is referred to as sagas. These are historiographical accounts um, from the Middle Ages that span the lifetimes of a uh, number of generations. Um, and as a result, these stories are both wonderfully but also sometimes woefully complex and they're quite difficult for students to get into because there's just an overwhelming number of characters in them. And the characters are always, it seems, named either Thor this or Thor that. Um, and it, it really, this is, this is not a joke. This is um, a quote from the New York Re uh, Review of Books. Uh, an example from Gisli Sirson's saga, we meet a man named Thorkel, who on the way to the Thor's Nest Assembly is accompanied by Thor Bjorn's sons, meets up with Thorstein, the son of Thorolf, who was living at Thor's Nest with Thora and their children, Thordis, Thorgrim, and Bork the Stout. <laughs> but even better in its hell-bent determination to promote domestic confusion is the man in Njal's saga who had two sons, both named Thorhall. So, these are problems not just for students but for academics also. And so, the challenge is, is knowing that Thordis is a woman, that Thorkel is a man, and that Thor's Ness is a place. So it's very easy to get lost in the characters and the geography of these stories. Um, traditional print solutions um, to these problems have been to supply the reader with notes and genealogies and maps, but these are often inadequate um, and the problem is really when you have in a print edition two people named Thorhall, two brothers, even if you look them up in a genealogy you don't know necessarily which one is the Thorhall that you're reading about. So what we can do is we can use digital solutions to work on this. We can do text encoding so that we can mark up that text and know exactly which Thorhall we're talking about at any one time. And we can have interactive maps that allow you to scale down and scale up um, and focus on the place, the geography that you are interested in. And you're not limited by the size of the page um, or the borders of that map. And so these are the solutions that we use to make students happy. These are things that they can wrap their head around, they can, they can interact with the text, it's more responsive, it's more engaging. So what I wanted was an ebook that would have a pop-up glossary that when you would click on the name Thorhall, you would get a little pop-up telling you it's this brother and not the other one. And it would be a pop-up so it wouldn't distract you from the, the main narrative of the text. You wouldn't have to leave the page, you're not flipping to the back of the book, you're still right there where you want to be. And I also wanted to be able to integrate Google Maps into this project in a way that would allow you when you found a place to be able to tap on it in the same way and it would take you directly to that location on a map and give you a picture of it. So that's what we wanted um, and what we tried and I say we because I got the, su the generous support of a Do It and UW Libraries grant for the ETEX initiative and had the help of Margaret Merrill and Carrie Nelson, who's not here. Um, and we wanted to find a good platform for doing this. Um, and what we found is that with ebooks, um, the current technology is, the current format is EPUB 3.0, which operates on HTML5. Um, so this allows any of the kind of uh, easy, interactive, multimedia engagement that you have on any website. Um, but the problem that we found is that not all e-text readers support all of the features that HTML5 is capable of. That at the moment 
there are just differing levels of what each platform will support and no one choice is perfect. The choice that gave us the most flexibility was iBooks from Apple. Um, this was a challenge for us because it, it's an accessibility issue. You have to have either an iPad or an Apple computer in order, to, uh, in order to use iBooks. So we wanted to find a platform that would work for PC and Android devices as well. We investigated a number of possibilities. We found um, one that, that had many of the same uh, widget features, but did not, uh, was not in the end um, a, a feasible platform for us to use because they changed their terms of service. Um, so Amazon, Kindle of course is very popular and works on both platforms, but does not support the kind of features that we wanted, does not have the kind of in-text pop-ups does not have a glossary where you can have one entry that you can refer to any number of times. So in the end, we decided to go with Apple iBooks and just to see what we could make. So this is the cover of the ebook, um, and here's a sample page from it. Um, so if I just read a little bit for you, there was a man named Thorbjorn. He was Bjarni's brother and lived at the whole farmstead. So we have in bold the name of our first character who shows up. Um, we can tap on his name to get a pop-up about him. Um, his brother Bjarni has already been introduced in a previous chapter, so his name is not in bold. But his name is still clickable. Anytime any of these characters' names appear, you can click on it and get a reference in case you've forgotten who that person was from a previous chapter. And that really is the beauty of these widgets, is that you are not creating a footnote for every single entry. You do not have, if Bjarni is mentioned a hundred times, you do not need a hundred separate footnotes going to the back of the book in order to link back to where you were. Um, so if I show you, here is a screenshot of one of the um, pop-ups. Um, and, and this is the, the real beauty of it. You, you can get that, that extra information here. Um, I've put in information about an archaeological site and about um, construction, environmental, and land use issues today for the areas where this saga took place um, a, a thousand years ago. Um, so students are able to engage with what has happened in the past and also what is happening today. If you follow, though, the pop-up, you have an option to go directly into the glossary where you can get a full family tree and explain those relationships between characters. And you can see already how complex this is and even just a small story. Um, but this is the kind of, of help that we're able to offer um, by putting in these uh, genealogies and resources directly in and linked to the text. Um, you see up at the top corner there's a button that says done. And this is what is genius about this, is that you click that done button and you go back to exactly where you were in the text. So instead of having a hundred um, footnotes leading you back and forth, you can just have one entry in the glossary and there's a back button which will bring you back to where you were. Um, for places, we wanted to um, link directly in to uh, Google Earth and Google Maps so that when you clicked on a place name in the text it would take you directly there. Uh, we found out that this is not possible um, <laughs> currently. <laughs> we wanted it to be possible but it's not. So the solution that that we came up with was just to put in an, um, an HTML link to Google Maps and then by building the map ourselves and putting in all of the entries in the text you have an index here on the side so students can just find the entry that they're interested in, click on it, and it will snap right to it. And there you can get an annotation um, and pictures of the place. So in this particular saga, geography is very important. Characters are either riding through um, the highland deserts um, or through, through much safer areas. Um, and this geography is really important for capturing the essence of this story in particular. Um, so we also able to use that same KML file um, to load into Google Earth so that you can zoom in and get a three-dimensional um, interaction with this landscape. And 
the end result of it, this is uh, what one of my students had to say after, after using the ebook. Um, I find the map very helpful with the text. For example, when Salmer makes the trip through the highlands, the description of the text sounds rather arbitrary. But seeing the journey itself on Google Earth is awesome, especially being able to see distance. Iceland itself seems pretty darn small, but when you look at the distance, and especially, especially the fact that they traveled by horse, I mean, I seriously want to know how long it took to travel that far. And now I understand why Hrapkel took the coastline to get to the all thing. You know, better weather, access to water, etc. Yes, this is what we want. We don't want students to be getting bogged down in the Thor this and Thor that of what's a character, what's a place. We want them to be able to engage with the text and have the same understanding and resources that a medieval audience might have had so that they can get to the crux of the story faster and then we can have more productive conversations in class. So that's what we tried, what we got, um, and what we would want to try for, for next time is of course to get over the initial hurdle that we couldn't solve, which is how to deliver this on an Android or PC platform. Um, currently, our students are able to check out Apple um, products from our info labs on campus. So that's how my students have been able to use this product in class. Um, but one thought that we have for the future would be making a custom dictionary for Amazon Kindle, where the dictionary would be full of all of these cultural, geographic, and names with entries in them, so that you would load the custom dictionary into your ebook, and then when you tapped on a name, it would bring up that custom dictionary side by side with your uh, Wikipedia search and dictionary search, and you'd be able to find an entry in there. Um, so that's, that's one thing we might hope to try, um, but that will take a lot more time to try coding, and ultimately, we're just sort of waiting for technology to catch up because these ebook readers and platforms keep improving themselves and keep adding to the features to which they can support from EPUB 3.0. That's my story.